coming up. We've got a very exciting call today. I've been looking forward for the, to this. Um, so today we have a, a guest speaker for us, and this is going to be David. Now, I met David online. We met through Facebook. It was kind of a, a odd story. He can tell you more about it. But what I do know is I met him in a, in a group of like uh, entrepreneurs and millionaires. And so um, I, I kind of learned about him and I've, I've been seeing what he posts and stuff. And I kind of figure out this guy is a kind of a badass. He's built his own business. Um, he's been able to, you know, set up some real estate stuff, some construction companies. So he's got a lot going on. Plus, um, he's also had a real good transformation in his fitness. He decided he was going to do it. He puts no excuses. He shows up, whether he slept, whether he doesn't. And so I just think his mindset, it's really, really, really valuable. And so I just wanted him to come in and share part of like his, his thought process. I wanted him to come in and kind of share his story on how he became an entrepreneur, how he built his business. And then what, when was that point where he decided to, you know, get into fitness and how has that journey been for him? And then what we'll do after he, he talks to us and we'll have some questions for him, um, feel free. But I, I really tell you guys, like, if you have any questions, like if you, if you ever tried to start a business, if you've ever, you know, needed some mindset on like anything, wisdom, this guy is the guy to ask questions to. So um, take advantage of it. So, yeah, I'll just let David be, man. Just kind of tell us about your story, how you got started into, you know, business and then fitness and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, first of all, I can't see the other guys. Is that normal? Yeah. If you're on your phone, yeah. Okay. Okay. That, and that's fine. Uh, so, I mean, first of all, thanks for, for letting me do this. I, I, I give a lot of advice. Some of it's unsolicited advice and, and, uh, uh sometimes unwanted but it, it is all it all does come from experience i i don't give any advice on any topic that i don't know of and and uh um and and you know the funny thing looking at that picture uh that you have up and i don't know if these guys can see it of of the transformation is uh the guy on the left and and that's my beautiful wife and the guy on the right uh, that's proof that money w can buy love. So I, 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 I just want y'all to know that, that, that that's the same woman. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, that's, that's, uh, 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 and she, <laughs> she, ac she actually got me a, a whole lot thinner than, than what she was putting up with there. But, but, uh, you know, I just, uh, uh, as far as business goes, I, I just grew up really poor and I had a lot of ambition. Um, and, and, and I tell my whole story because sometimes when you listen to people's stories and, and they have accomplished a lot, uh, they're these super, super badass guys that, st that were, that were started out smarter than you, or maybe their parents had money. And I like to tell it from you know, tell the truth, tell it from a point where, you know, I, I'm still just an average guy and, and I always was an average guy. I barely made it out of high school. I was a C student. And I think years later, I, I kind of, uh, because my mom that got pregnant with me earlier, early in life, put herself through nursing school. And then now she's a doctor and, and, uh, and that, that grit that she had, that is one advantage that I did have, I, I got to go home every night and see an example of somebody that would not accept failure as an option. Uh, a, a lady that was a single mother that, that had two children by the time she was in a, the 11th grade and grew up in a small rural Tennessee town. And that lady that's only 15 years older than I am she's a doctor now and, and, and has been a doctor for a long time. And she's a great doctor. She's, she's, uh, my, my primary caregiver somewhat her, her, her boss, her boss is, and he's kind of out right now, but, but, um, but you, you can only do that with grit and perseverance. And, and, uh, she had made some early mistakes really early and 
I, I, I got firsthand and I always say when you see kids, when, when you see children of people that have done really well financial wise, uh, you always, now keep in mind, my mother didn't, I, I was grown before my mother started making a doctor's salary. So, so that, that I mean, that, that was, I, I didn't benefit from that at all growing up. Uh, the last four years of high school, I got the benefit from, you know, what a registered nurse makes, but, uh, but that's after several years of not working also were, you know, and being in government housing, but, but, uh, but successful, successful entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, and their father was an entrepreneur. The biggest advantage they had was they got to sit down and eat dinner every night with somebody that knew the exact path. That that's the, their biggest advantage. It wasn't that, that, and, and, and so we, you know, with not being political at all with none of this, but we all heard that Donald Trump's dad, you know, loaned him a million bucks and this and that, that million bucks is, is, you know, I, I did a ratio, a, a ratio during that time when that was so popular, shared it on Facebook. It would have been equivalent to, uh, some of our parents giving us $5,000, uh, for if, if you, if, if you were worth two million bucks, if you had done with $5,000, what Donald Trump done with that a million, it would be that. So it wasn't the money that he gave him. It was that it, it, it was getting to sit down every night and eat dinner with a multimillionaire, learning the things of what to do. Everybody has advice on what not to do. Don't make my mistakes and all these things, but learning the things, you know, of what to do. And I got to watch my mom pro probably, you know, somebody could probably write a book about her. And there's so many people that, that are out there that, that overcame all those obstacles and achieved great things. Now, uh, so, so that was probably my biggest advantage was I got to live in a house till I was 18 years old with a lady that had that kind of grit. And, and, and also a lady that led me to believe, you know, sometimes that it's gullible to believe you can literally do anything. I, I, you, you play baseball. I love baseball. I was mediocre at best. My mom led me to believe, and I was gullible enough to believe it, that I could do anything. And, and, uh, and, and that went a long way, but so. I, I barely did get out of high school. I feel like I, I, I think I probably, you know, have ADD and I have a hard time, uh, uh, concentrating on, on things. And, and I think that's probably my biggest problem in school other than the normal things that go with high school girls, lazy, you know, wanting to party and I, but I also had an unusual amount of ambition in high school early on. And I already had laid a plan out. So, Every day I went into algebra class, it had nothing to do with construction. It had nothing to do with real estate. And I had this plan laid out from the ninth grade. I didn't have it all laid out. It wasn't a very well laid out plan, but, but I did have a, at least a direction and, and, and those subjects that didn't have anything to do with that, that I really felt like I didn't need or would never need. I had a hard time with them. And so I got out of school and I just simply went to work in construction. Cause if you want to know something, you just go to that. And within two years, I started my own business and, and, and I struggled for the, for the first several years for several reasons. One thing, uh, I was very, very young. I was only 20. Uh, so I just simply didn't have any experience construction or business wise. But I, I, the one thing that I had that, 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 that I, I looked back and, and didn't realize at the time. Um, I, I knew that going into business, I, I was, I was uh, at a disadvantage with my experience, the amount of capital I had, all these other things. I did not realize until I got into business that how, how much more willing to work than anybody else was. I didn't realize that. And what, and, and about a year in, I realized 
these guys are are lazy. They're complacent and they're lazy. And and so I ended up beating them. And it, it didn't take long at all because we're in a small town. I was in the concrete business and I just simply ended up um, simply ended up beating them. I outworked them because they were they had more experience, more money. They were smarter in most cases than I were. Uh, I was serious about it. I had my goal in mind and, and that's what I did. And and so it, it didn't, it, I, I really like to say that because I want anybody to know that, that, that that's what it takes that you'll ultimately win. Now, the smarter you are and, 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 and some of those other characteristics, more experience, if you can combine that with hard work, you'll get, you'll get to the, to, to your goal faster, but, but, but you can just get there by sheer work. And so, uh, you know, before I forget this point, uh, anybody, I, I really feel like that anybody that is successful at, at really transforming their body, like, like they have a, a, a good body, they've achieved those goals and they're working harder that it's so much like being in business. It's, 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 uh, you, you, you're, you're, you're constantly failing. First of all, you're, you're almost never that's, you know, that's the whole reason why we have to, you have to go on this in this message group and say, what's one win from the week. Well, you know, as a society, we want to be just winning all the time and that's not really possible. So everybody lowers the bar. Right. And, and so, uh, when you're setting the bar, you have this ideal image of this body that you want and this health that you want, and how you want to feel, uh, in the gym, we all know we can share one win from a week. We can dig hard and get that, but we all know that it's a bunch of failures. It's a bunch of, uh, it's hurt. You know, first of all, it hurts. It's your, this morning I was five minutes late to the gym. This new workout you have me on, I, I I leave the gym at 630 no matter what. I cannot, I cannot fit it into 55 minutes. I have to have that 60 minutes, and I was five minutes late. That was a fail. Some mornings that I'm not feeling as good. I like to I like to follow your routine to a T. Uh, and so I can let my attitude shift just a little bit when somebody's on that next machine that I'm supposed to go to a little bit, and especially if it's somebody you know, scrolling through their phone or hanging on the, hanging on the lap pool, you know, kind of talking to a girl, you know, and, and I can let that get to me real quick or I can skip to the next one and go on, you know, and, and so, but I, I want these guys and especially like Daniel that, that has achieved and, and you two achieve some, uh, some great things as far as, you know, the, the way you've transformed your body or made your body look, uh, th those are the exact qualities that I, that, that are used to basically be successful in anything. And that, and that's, uh, and, 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 you know, not everybody in the gym is financially, you know, successful. I'll never forget years ago, I was working out and one of the, the, you know, biggest you know cut guys in there was kept mopping the floor every day but he didn't own the gym and I didn't think he worked there you know I kind of nosed around and and he was mopping the floor for his gym on his gym membership and I remember at that time thinking how can somebody be so disciplined to do all that with their mind and their body but have to mop the floor to to pay for their gym membership you know something's not right there so i know that can't be but i will tell you it's those same qualities and and i actually on the other end of the spectrum know so many big old fat unhealthy millionaires that that have literally given life and limb to make it to where they are and and they won't step foot in a gym and they can't achieve those goals so it, it, it's the same but but those same things you know so 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 I started when I, I went out on my own when I was about 20 and just slowly basically slowly built from there I'm 43 now uh 
R real estate has probably construction's always been like the the uh the that that's kind of my cash cow that that keeps money coming in the real wealth has been built from real estate which you know and i the main reason i share that is because again that's 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 an old business you don't have to invent anything you don't have to be worrying about crypto or or all these new things you know buying carbon credits and and stuff that 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 none of us you know some of us barely understand uh we all know real estate we all know we all live in a house and and we know how that goes and there's so much information out there on it and unlike some of the other things and and one reason i found you was because i had googled and and i felt like i was getting all this 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 bad information on on this journey you know and and so uh uh there's a ton of information out there about real estate and that's where where most of the wealth was built so uh i mean i'll let you ask another question unless you if i got off topic there yeah that's a good story man like it just takes it makes me think about what's the difference between the people who who run, like you said, you mentioned there, there are people who, who built businesses, but they're fat and there are the offices and they're like out of shape. And then there are also people who are like real good shape, but are, are very broke. What do you think? What do you think is the difference between those two? Like if you say that they have the same qualities, say these people, it takes the same qualities, right? Build a business, consistency, perseverance. You have to work hard. You build the business. If you already have those skills, why why is it so hard for people to usually you know use those skills at a gym well so i think probably obviously the best answer is uh not everybody is all that interested in 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 being rich and on the other hand uh uh not everybody's really interested in being uh having a nice body and living a healthy lifestyle so it it's not they just simply don't care so that guy you see on the left in me um of course that was my all-time weight that was the guy that was really really focused on making money but i just simply didn't care i i i did i wasn't worried about my body or my looks and and so you know you had made a comment and and it was real and that's one reason that i got I, I came to you in the beginning was because you were real and you said i'm going to be honest you know the reason i got into this was so i could get a so i could get a hot girlfriend right and 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 so i've always been a little bit overweight and for whatever reasons that never did stop me from having you know the 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 kind of girlfriends or and ended ended up you know wife that that I wanted and so so I just kind of felt like well I'm getting by with it I I don't have to do it and so it wasn't about you know a, a health thing or anything like that because because honestly regardless of what excuse anybody gives that they're in the gym killing themselves the the biggest reason hands down is to look better. Now we can all, you know, nobody wants to be talking to somebody at the gym and just say, I, I just want to, I want to be healthy. That's, that's all it is. I mean, that they want to look better. They want to look good. They want to be attractive. And, uh, you know, the guy on the left didn't care because I had always gotten by with that. I was, I was achieving, you know, that and, and, uh, and there was a part of me also that first of all I, I felt like i was giving everything i had to making money and achieving wealth and that i didn't have anything more i've also one battle you and i have had you know with getting me keeping me trim is that i've kind of figured out that i'm bit i'm a bit of a stress eater and and i knew when i went on that weight loss journey that I was going to have to find uh, uh, some sort of different coping mechanism other than food when I was stressed out. And, uh, I'm not much of a drinker. I'm, I'm a, an occasional social drinker. I don't smoke, 
you know, I, I do chew my fingernails and, and I'll do, you know, things like that. But, but, but there's, there, there wasn't much more of a coping mechanism for me to run to any of the rest of them would have been, you know, very, very unhealthy too. So, uh, so I, I, I think the difference is their, you know, their focus and, 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 you know, really what they want, because not everybody, uh, and it took me a long time to realize this, not everybody cares to achieve wealth. Um, n- not everybody is disgusted at themselves because they're fat and, and, and not very attractive, you know, just to be, just to be quite frank there. So, so that's part of it too. Okay. Okay. So, so when you, when you got started, how long did it take you to get to a point where you were a little happier with yourself or, you know, felt better? And what was the journey like? Um, well, I, I think it probably took, uh, you know, three or four months, uh, to, for me to feel like that. And, and, you know, uh, and, and let me just say this to probably the biggest accomplishment that, that I've made in this, in this whole journey, uh, just talking about the weight loss is the fact that, that I know my, you know, I've known myself for 43 years. I know that I've made a lifestyle change. Um, so all these other failed attempts that I, I, I never got to that point at this point in my life, I know that I will be going to the gym every day. If I'm physically able, I know I'll be watching what I eat. I know I'll be looking at macros sometimes, <clears throat> maybe not as hard as other times but I know that I've made that lifestyle change and, 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 and it's kind of, a uh, equivalent to if you've ever had a stressful job and, and it was just really tying you down and really, you know, really it, it, it's, and you decided to quit that job and, or, or you made the decision to quit that job. Maybe you hadn't quit it yet, but you've made that decision to quit that job. And you know, in yourself that you're quitting, you know, that Friday's your last day. You, you had, maybe you hadn't even told your boss or anybody else, but that feeling you get when you know that that's how that's going to be. And, and, uh, so, so that's probably the biggest accomplishment is that, that I know that if I'm physically able, I'm going to go to the gym and I know that I'm going to be watching what I eat. I know I'm going to be watching my portions and that I'm going to be mindful of that. You know, I've, I've watched my wife do it for 20 years and, and she's not miserable at all. She's, she doesn't get any hungrier than, than that guy that I was on the left. I mean, and, and so, uh, that's probably the, you know, the biggest accomplishment, but it it took, you know, I started in December of, 2020 and I felt really good by April but by, by April I had I think lost probably 20 or 25 pounds I felt really good I I, I was I, I was on a path that I was comfortable with it wasn't hurting anymore I wasn't hurting at the gym you know I you had those mornings where I was on that treadmill and and you know, I'd have my legs would be burning for that particular morning or, or my side would start hurting. And I, you know, I hadn't had that in a long time, but like, you know, when you used to be at baseball practice and the coach made you run all these laps and your side just started killing you, you know, I, I used to get that for, you know, just out of the blue and, and, and I pushed through those and usually within just a few minutes it went away or, or, you know, I work out fasted. Uh, all the time I always have and and so you know you get 10 minutes in and you're you're starving to death you know you're you you hadn't ate in several hours and you're just starving to death and and so uh uh you know it it, it was it was that long and then I probably I felt and you and I talked about this the other day I felt my best in 
around the months of October, November. And, uh, you know, my, my weight, that, that picture on the right was my cousin's wedding. That was in October. Uh, I'm probably eight, nine pounds heavier than that. Now, some of it is obviously muscle. Uh, uh, but, but I, I can't say that it's probably all muscle, you know, getting off track a little bit, trying to, you know, get, get more protein, try allowed myself some more calories, just, just experimenting. But the good thing about that is, is that I know in my heart and my mind that, that I've made a change, you know, a dedication to change. And so, uh, and, and it, it has stuck, you know, we're a year and three months in now. So it, it has stuck. That's pretty awesome. Any of you guys have any questions, Daniel, Nate, for, for David? So, um, so, so David, uh, Robinson, um, I, uh, I, I agree with you on that whole, you know, discipline in one area applies to the next. Um, when you're talking about perseverance, when you're talking about that discipline, um, I myself, uh, will soon in the next year, cause my wife and I have some financial goals right now that we're shooting for that we're going to hit. Um, after we hit those goals, we're planning, I'm planning on, um, getting my own squat rack and dumbbells and such and starting my own strength training as well on top of helping David out here just doing some in-person stuff and when you're talking about perseverance and stuff in what way do you mean in in in, in a business like that what are you constantly looking at what are you waking up and doing every day or keeping track of in general does that make sense yeah yeah and so so basically Daniel <clears throat> um you're you're gonna you're going to eat, sleep and breathe this. Um, and, and, and I say that in a way that sounds almost unhealthy, but, but I'm going to tell you if, if, and, and this goes for anybody, if you're a guy that that's constantly listening to sports radio, uh, watching football games, basketball games, um, if you're golfing all the time, if you're doing, uh, fantasy football, all these things, um, that those, and especially, and I, I like to watch a good college football game as much as anybody, but when you're spending your time talking about those things, uh, it, you know, you're talking about another man's life. You're talking about another man's goals, another man's achievements. So it's basically eat, sleeping, and breathing because like I, I, I saw your transformation and, and from where you were in order for you to go from that guy that was playing that, that bass guitar to where you are today and what your body looks like today, you basically ate, slept and breathe. What can I do next? You, you were listening to podcasts. You were Googling stuff. It was on your mind nonstop. That that actually becomes your hobby. There's really nothing unhealthy about it. There's times when when you're really intense, you're that's all you're focused on. Then there are times when you're at the beach or you're at dinner with your wife and you're just looking through the menu and you see a new item and you're like, huh, oh, I wonder how much protein's in that. So your mind's constantly doing that. It's also being able to accept failure, accept failure as commonplace, right? So, so failure scares people. It, it scares people to death. And, but you're, you know, going into it that you're going to be constantly failing. And as these, as these, you know, business gurus always say that that success is built on a pile of failures. And and that's right, because, you know, if you had to sit down and if 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 David Maldonado said, uh, hey, share some, you know, some failures you had this week. I mean, my phone would be just dinging off the hook. And, and so not everybody's comfortable with that, Daniel. And and when you, you make a commitment, uh, when you make a commitment to do what you're going to do, 
if you do not give yourself an option to fail and, and your wife may even say, okay, I'm good with that. We reach those financial goals. I'm good with that. But then what's plan B? You may come up with a plan B to give your wife because women love security and, and they deserve security. That's their motherly instinct. But Daniel does not need to have a plan B. There is no plan B. When you, when you decide to that, that that's your goal, there is no plan B to that. That's your goal. You're, you're, you're not going to fail unless you give yourself an option to fail. Now, it might take 20 years, but, but how, you know, how, how much of yourself are you willing to put in it, into it? And so that's what I'm thinking. So anybody you see in the gym, and of course, it, it's a little different, with, which money can be the same way because we see guys that are wealthy and, and they inherited it or, or got it in other ways or maybe just had shit house luck and got it. And there's some of those guys. And the same thing with the guys in the gym. There's guys in the gym that look really good and they just, you know, let's just face it. They had really good genetics. You know, maybe they, maybe they, they, you know, I know a 70 year old guy that never works out and he looks like he does. And he has some, he, he played football at Mississippi state or Ole Miss and, 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 and he comes in our gym and he does a little bit, but I mean, this dude takes his shirt off. He's got a natural six pack. It's all genetics, but, but that where, where I'm going with that is, is, is that the guys that, and you and Maldonado that, that have achieved these bodies that are something to be proud of. It's not something you can really do part-time. It's not something you, you can, you can go to the gym an hour a day, but the rest of the time you're studying nutrition you're, you know, this is your main goal. And, and so those things, you know, when, when you do this, you're going to have to kind of, you know, be looking at business. How do I market this? And, you know, those types of things, how, how do I market it? What's my clients? You're going to strike out and, and sometimes, you know. So to sum it up, you're saying outwork everyone. That man, that, that will win every single time. Okay. Uh, that, uh, and not, and, and also to sum it up, do not give yourself a plan B. Um, you know, you use the same energy that you've used to transform your body and put that into what you're going to be doing it, you know, with your, with your, with your business. And, and that's, that's exactly what my advice would be. And, 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 and it will not fail. Now, two years from now, we may be talking and you barely be off the ground, but you're, you're still off the ground and, and you hadn't failed, you know, so. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, no problem. Any more questions from anybody? Nate, uh, Wilbert. Um, I appreciate yeah, the yeah. Time. I actually have, I actually have a question. Yeah, so, sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry I'm not turning on the camera. I just got from the gym and, and was cooking while while listening, right? To to David's um perspective, David Robinson. Um, I wanted to ask. Um, so, I uh, I I think it's clear, you know, it's. Part of the path is always failing and, and looking forward to keep trying, you know, and keep doing doing your best, um, both fitness wise and and business wise. But I wanted to ask, how do you manage um, your resting between the work, uh, between work and gym? Um. Okay, so. So now, you know, I've been in, and then when you say resting, are you talking about like sleeping at night or, or what are you talking about? Yeah, um, yeah, man. Uh, I think, um, maybe I'm talking a little bit more about routine, you know, how, like how many hours at night do you, uh, do you usually sleep or, or, um, do you, how often do you take time off? Cause, cause yeah, um, I don't think, uh, I, I don't know if I'm speaking for everyone, but there's or also like 
um, being mentally tired from, from, you know, working and going to the gym. Uh, um, because of one of the points, right, that you said that when you're in, in the gym, you're basically eating and thinking and sleeping, you know, nutrition in gym. So it does um, get tiresome mentally. So basically to sum it up, what's like, how do you balance your resting between, you know, achieving your goals, both financially and in the gym? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Nate. Uh, and, um, and of course, uh, the, so let me ask you this, uh, are you, are you in business for yourself or do you work for someone? Um, no, I'm currently working for someone. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, and, and we, I, I typically were, just refer to those as, as W2 jobs or W2, uh, people. And, and I mean, there's W2 people that, you know, it has nothing to do with the amount you make because there's obviously W2 people that, that are in seven and eight digits. And, uh, but, but, um, uh, uh, I, I, I'm not as busy a, as you would probably think, first of all. Um, now, uh, one thing is that I've become more organized in my business and I've put people in place to do most of the work because I've been in business for 25 years. But I will tell you this, Nate, uh, most of the mental stress that you're feeling and, and you kind of commented, you know, kind of like you were feeling mental stress and then you go to the gym you're getting that from your boss and the threshold he's held from you, but he's also basically telling you in most cases, how not only I want you to do this job, but how he wants you to, you know, how he wants you to go about doing the job, which might not necessarily be the most efficient way it may be, it, it's not the way you want. They also, it's, it's typical in business as an employer to hold the bar and let's just use numbers here at 10 and you're really okay with them just reaching eight, but you always hold it at 10. And so that leaves kind of a, an unsac, unsat, unsatisfactory feeling all the time and leaves you kind of on a hamster wheel trying to get to that 10 that they know they're never, never going to reach. Um, first of all, I, the, the first thing I do is, um, it, it, I realized how important my health was that, and which kind of got me on this journey. Um, I do that first thing in the morning. So that's how I start my day. I wake up at, and, and I live way out in the country. I live on the 132 acres out in, out in the country. And, uh, and so I wake up, uh, at, at 430, 420, 430. And I use the bathroom, wash my face, get dressed, brush my teeth, uh, mix my pre-workout. And I'm at the gym by 530. And now it takes me 20 minutes to get to the gym. And I'm religiously there at 5.30. I do five days a week, sometimes throw in an extra day. Um, I'm in the gym between 5.30 and 6.30. And I, I, most everybody knows that if you call me between 5.30 and 6.30, it better be a damn emergency because I'm, I'm, that's my time. Now, I'll occasionally get texts from people that – don't know that and I'm not going to be rude to them or anything. And at 6 30, I leave the gym. When I get in my truck to leave the gym, anything that, that I can do between the gym and back home to get dressed for the day, uh, which would be on the phone, I do that. And then also at my house, but, but I just, you know, being more organized and all that, but I will, I, I do want you to know this in case you've ever thought about being in business for yourself. You do not have to take that stress that you feel at your W-2 job and start multiplying that at, 
to be a business owner. It, it doesn't necessarily work like that. In so many cases, you could possibly be more stressed than I am because of bad management. Uh, I mean, I have a neighbor that that's a that's a CEO, and he's actually in Mexico right now, which and, and he had to move there for three years. He still got his farm by me. He's running this company. The company's going broke. He's he's miserable now. He's a millionaire but he's locked into this contract and he's absolutely miserable, you know, and by all right, when you, when you seen his house and his farm and, you know, his wife and all these things, and he's in Mexico, he's, he's in a compound. They have a driver. They have this big mansion with the pool and all that, but they can't, they can't leave there. You know, they, they, he don't, he don't get to run around his couple hundred acre farm. And, and so, uh, uh, you you know one thing you you uh, a lot of people automatically assume when you're in business that we're working you know way more uh and and that's not necessarily the case we we do work probably more hours but you don't necessarily like clock in at six and clock out at eight and then boom you're gone you you may clock in at six and have a hellacious run to lunchtime. Yesterday, I had a two-hour lunch with one of my buddies. Cut up. We did talk a little business, but it was mostly cutting up, you know, this or that. And then we went to, uh, uh, you know, uh, I left there and, 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 you know, had a great rest of the day. So, so just being very organized and, you know, and, and, uh, putting things in place and, and, and then I, I am typically always working, but man, if you enjoy it, then, then it's okay. But that the gym is, is a scheduled thing and, uh, it's non-negotiable. That's, that's not, everybody knows that's not, that's non-negotiable. And, and, uh, I, I realized later, I kind of thought and I realized later that, that, you know, we never negotiate whether we're going to eat or not. You know, we all eat three meals a day. Right. And so we're, we're nobody ever negotiates that. Like you never say, Hey, I'm not going to be able to eat today because of this or this or this. We find time to eat. We find time to sleep. We find time to scroll through Facebook, uh, watch TV, do these other things. And, and I just had to find that place for the gym for, I'm not one that that probably needs to just kind of go to the gym when they want to i i gotta have that time slot this is when i'm going to the gym and and, and that's what i gotta do so uh but that i was i mean that's a good question and and i appreciate that i do do keep in mind though that i have a lot of guys a lot of a great team that i rely on a lot and and once you get into business and and you you start to realize how it all works and put those teams into place uh it's not nearly as hard or or time consuming as it seems you know uh, thank you thank you man that's actually uh like a really good perspective because you know i am thinking i'm sorry you know, to get into business, and I was already thinking like time to work. That was that was hard. So that's a good perspective, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, Nate, you had something. We, um, he pretty much hit it. That was great. I, I really appreciate you taking the time for us. That was, that was great. Cool. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we're almost here. An hour here. I appreciate you, David, for taking time. To yeah, talk no problem. And sharing just some wisdom, man. You, you have no clue how, you know, maybe like one or two things that you say today can change the course of like anyone. You know, there is there's going to be everything for everyone in, in this call, you know, from time management things, discipline to perseverance to working hard. Something I will say you know, and my little bit of experience that I have in business is that you have to, you have to almost be irrational 
and you have to almost be, you know, a little bit of fanatical. And sometimes it's going to be hard to deal with, for me at least, with people, you know, telling me you have to take a break, you have to enjoy, you have to, you know, do other things and you have to travel or whatever. But the reality is that, I mean, this is what I enjoy doing, right? And so it's going to be it's some work. It's what I breathe, do, you know, and, and definitely comes down to organizing yourself. Definitely, definitely comes down to priorities. I, I think everyone has time for everything. If you want to start a business, have a job, do fitness and go on dates. I think you can have all of that if you just organize everything. Everyone. Yeah. So, so, yeah, man, I appreciate you. Um, if anyone else has anything before we go, uh, speak now or, or never. Uh, let's keep <laughs> Let's keep sharing wins on the group, guys. Wins are really important. Like David said, it's all about failure. Like in baseball, if you hit 300, you're a fucking superstar. But you consider that you fail seven times out of 10, right? But you hit 300 and then you go to Hall of Fame, which means that you succeeded 30% of the time. In business, in fitness, you're going to succeed less than that. And that's still going to be considered a success, okay? So... If you can go to the, if you can take one hour of your day and win that one hour of your day, that's one out of 24. That's very minimum time. Maybe you're losing the rest of the hours, but you won that one hour in the gym. That's considered a win. So keep sharing the wins. Uh, keep, keep motivating everyone in the group. Keep each other accountable. Let's become a family. Let's become a, a tribe and let's get in great shape together. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for having me, and thanks for asking. I, and if anybody wants to reach out to me, uh, 